guys and welcome back to my channel where we spill tea left to right and everywhere in between. In today's video we are talking about dads. We are doing a little mini deep dive into some of the biggest influencer and youtuber dads out there including the D'Amelio sisters, Trisha Paytas, Tana Mojo, and Shane Dawson. It's going to be a lot. But before we get into the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new uploads. And head over to the Hot Tea Twitter account where you can follow and message me with any tea or topics that you would like to be covered. Normally, we post the hottest tea and fill you in all the drama, but sometimes we do these little deep dive mini documentary videos where we take a deeper look into some of the celebrities and influencers out there. Anyway, grab a snack and snuggle up and let's spill some tea. So the D'Amelio sisters exploded onto social media and soared to fame around 2020 and have been on a steady climb since then with brands and merch and TV shows and all sorts of stuff. Of course, being so much in the public eye has by proxy made their family members a household name we are now familiar with as well. While we may know who Mark D'Amelio is, what do we really know about him? Let's dish. Mark D'Amelio was born in November 19th. 1968 in Connecticut. While he's only basically known for being the father to TikTok legends Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio, Mark put in work and has an apparel company called Mad Soul Clothing Company, which he launched in 2000. He's an entrepreneur and got involved in politics around 2016, having got his bachelor degree in political science back in 1991. Mark married Heidi in 2000 and since has gone on to grow pretty big on social media media platforms being called the CEO of the D'Amelio family and the dad of TikTok. I'm pretty sure I've seen posts from Tiana who claims them as her parents or at least wishes that Heidi and Mark were her parents. From me to you, Mark and Heidi, run. Okay, so onto some controversies from Mark's past, which we of course cannot skip and of course a lot of you are here to hear about. A recent-ish little scandal that he found himself in was due to tweeting about being a quote white guy and feeling inadequate being an Italian living in New York. He expressed that he had a story to tell that cannot be told by the color of his skin. He deleted this tweet after it caught a lot of backlash, then some did jump to his defense simply saying that he was just claiming to be more than his skin color. And for context, this happened back in May 2021. Back in 2014, D'Amelio was arrested for drunk driving with 9-year-old Charlie in the front seat and three strangers that he picked up in the back seat. As the story goes, Mark apparently won big at the Mohegan Sun Casino and decided to drive around South Norwalk, handing out his winnings after picking up these three strangers from a bodega. Mark says that his intention for doing this was to teach his daughter a lesson in helping the misfortunate. Apparently, during the sobriety field test, Mark told the officer that his test results may vary as he suffers from Parkinson's disease. That is alleged. It's alleged. Charges for this against Mark were dismissed after he was granted accelerated rehabilitation, which meant that he had to be clean and sober and maintain a clean record for nine months. So what happens next is a little bit of a mess and it took me quite a bit of reading to understand fully what happened but I think I got it and I think I can break this down for you really quick. The story of Mark's arrest resurfaced in 2018 when the police reports was released to a news website Nancy on Norwalk. There was a bunch of back and forth between Mark's attorney and the police department and the police chief on the records being released and there was an apology given out as apparently the records were released in error. And they requested the records back from Nancy, to which she denied, and the whole was a bit of a mess. But basically, they really didn't want Nancy to release the records, and there was a court transcript in there as well, because apparently it wasn't all correct, and even the police department said so, having said that it was a, quote, human error. Okay, so basically, Mark can swear under oath that he has never been arrested because the charges were dropped and he completed the rehabilitation. That's pretty much the gist of that. 
But in 2018, when the story came out again, Mark claimed that it was released by Democrats as this was around the time that Mark was running for the 25th district seat in an attempt to replace Bob Duff. Duff released a statement saying that he had nothing to do with any of it and that it's between, quote, him and the city, talking about Mark. Mark said the release of those records were a, quote, witch hunt against him and that he, quote, made a mistake, it's my past, and the only reason this is coming up now is because I'm the only candidate that's ever given Bob Duff a run. Mark said that the Duff had never been challenged in the way that he challenged him and that he was quote up in arms. We got an email here at the Hot Tea channel from a local to the same town that this all happened in who says that two of the three strangers that were present in the backseat had a plethora of charges between them including drug charges, assault charges, and an involvement with a 2005 shooting. Our sources cite the Nancy on Norwalk News website as well. I can't actually find anything on who these individuals were in that back seat, but it seems that their involvement in the Demelia's lives began and ended that night, as Mark claims to have just been giving them a ride home. The court transcript of all this shows that Mark says this was the biggest mistake of his life. So again, all the charges against Mark were dropped as he completed the rehabilitation and has seemingly kept a very clean record since then. Perez Hilton also released all of this information back in 2020 and tweeted, I have zero regrets about exposing Mark D'Amelio's drunk driving and child endangerment, and this was already public information. Mark now has a pretty active social media presence himself, with 1.8 million followers on Instagram and over 10 million followers on TikTok. It seems that Mark has had really no involvement in the political world since 2018 and after a quick scroll through his Twitter feed and other social media platforms, it seems like he really just posts about sports and hanging out with his family these days. Being the parents of a famous kid will always come with the label that you're exploiting the child and taking advantage of the platform that you are basically handed through the child's work. I mean, I say work very loosely just because, I mean, it's TikTok. <laughs> That's not to discredit the work that the girls have likely done since shooting to stardom, but that means in how they got there. I mean, come on, it's TikTok. Let's just call it what it is. While the actions of that night were highly irresponsible and absolutely unacceptable, I think that as a society, at some point, we do have to forgive, right? After all the reading that I've done on this, I kind of think that Mark has done his best to better himself and really did take it seriously to not commit something like this again. My thoughts on whether the initial sentencing and dismissal are fair or not may be another thing. I mean, we all know the system is not the fairest, and would the story be the same ending for anyone else? Who knows? But I think for this particular situation, Mark has kind of done okay. On a personal level, it would be awesome to see someone with his platform maybe do something for the cause, like a rehab program or a charity of some kind. But it seems to be something that he just wants to forget and move on from, which I think we can all understand. But again, maybe bringing it to light himself and maybe either helping victims of crimes like this or helping people who struggle and avoid them committing crimes like this which can lead to much more serious outcomes would just be a really cool thing to do. Statistics show that every two minutes, someone is injured from a drunk driving accident. In 2017, over 10,000 people died in drunk driving accidents. An average drunk driver has driven over 80 times before their first arrest. The numbers are scary, the situation is scary, and it's not something that we are unaware of. To bring it to a real level with you for a second, don't drink and drive, you might not be as lucky as some people out there. Let's talk about Trisha Paytas' father, Frank Paytas. Born in 1956, Frank and Trisha had a rocky relationship early on, supposedly. Frank is a successful businessman who sold his company for millions of dollars, which Trisha actually mentioned in a recent live stream, which she um, came clean about lying in the past to some of her childhood to her friends. During that live stream, Trisha claims that she manifested the mansion and wealth for her father due to these lies. If you missed that, we did cover it in one of our last videos, so be sure to check that out after you finish this one. Anyway, Trisha also mentions her dad a couple of times back on the Frenemies podcast. I seem to remember once being to say that he loves Moses, her husband, and has nicknamed Trisha Zipporah, who is the wife of Moses from the Bible. Trisha apparently hated her stepmother and so did Trisha's biological mother. Trisha moved in with her dad around 15 years old, according to an article on FamilyTron.com, and according to that same article, once Frank sold his company for all of that money, Trisha's mother took him to courts to battle for custody. 
Trisha has featured her dad in a couple YouTube videos, one which was seven years ago titled Meet My Dad and another that was three years ago titled Surprising My Dad with Courtside Tickets. In the Meet My Dad video, it acts as a father-daughter tag and Trisha just asks him some pretty basic questions from her fans. She does disclose that her father had been in her life for her whole life though and even she gushes at one point over how much she loves him. I know you're busy, so you have a yeah. busy schedule, so... Uh... But I see you now! I used to not see my dad for like a year. I would be like, oh yeah, I'm busy. I come and see you. You do. Yeah. And we appreciate that. <laughs> you know what? When you get older, like, you just appreciate your relationship with your parents more. Like, I just, I like, my dad's like my favorite person now. Trisha's dad wanted her to become a nun, and that gets referenced in this old video when Trisha asks him what a different name for her would have been. If I had to pick a name for you, uh, Mary. I knew that was coming. Why? Well, because uh, that was Jesus' mother's name. <laughs> I think he wanted that name he said before, too, when I was actually uh, born. I would like Mary. My dad also wants me to become a nun, like... I wonder if he still thinks that Trisha could become a nun, considering the career path that she chose, and also the Jewish stuff, and the witchcraft stuff. <laughs> my dad did so much for me. Oh my god, he took me to Tom Jones in Vegas, Donny Osmond, he got me meet and greet passes. I mean, I had a pretty happy and spoiled childhood because of my dad. Looking back, I really appreciate it. Well, <laughs> I, I appreciate you doing good things. <laughs> Trisha talks about how as soon as she graduated high school, her dad moved her out to California with him, like, the exact date that she graduated. So it kind of seems like the relationship wasn't so bad, and maybe the stuff Trisha recently was talking about, with supposedly lying about how much money he had, really wasn't the case. As it seems that he was well off enough financially to rent out a whole plane to fly her and a friend over to Michael Jackson's house. Obviously, things behind closed doors are always a different story, and I would never belittle anyone's experiences, but I think the daddy issues that Trisha has claimed before might be a little embellished, just saying. Frank Peta seems like a super quiet and religious dude, but to be clear when I say that, religious and quiet does not always equal good. Trisha seems close with her mother, who regularly comes over and gets old clothes of Trisha's to sell on used designer clothing apps. Moving on, let's talk about Kyle Yaw, Shane Dawson's father. Not unlike the majority of our topics today, Shane didn't have the best relationship with his father and has made it a usual joke within a lot of his videos. Shane released a video titled The Truth About My Past about four years ago where he details his childhood and upbringing and calls it rough. Shane's parents divorced when he was nine years old and he says it really was just him, his brothers, and his mom and says that he didn't really have a father figure in his life. Shane vaguely attributes his EDs to his childhood and lack of father figure. He also touches on the content that he used to create years and years and years that depicts fatherless kids and many stories of fathers regretting their neglect of their sons. This is clear to be a sign of longing and it comes out in a creative format. In a Draw My Life video of Shane's, he confesses that his father was abusive and yelled slash hurt him and his mother every night and that he became really close with his brothers mainly due to the fact that they were scared of their father. Shane said that it caused him to have issues sleeping into his adult life. Shane does say in his precursor to the Confronting My Dad video that maybe as children we make things worse or when we think about our childhood we remember our villains as much worse than they really were. And while I think that there is some truth to that, I also wonder if that's just a way to give himself a reason to open back up to his father. Shane mentions in that video that's a little awkward to reconnect with his father because he has been so public about the bad relationship that they had, which again is also true and maybe saying out loud that it might not have been as bad as he remembered is just a way to subconsciously justify it to himself. Even though Shane posted the Reconnecting With My Dad video back in 2017, it seems that they might still be estranged today. Though Shane is not as active on his YouTube channel as he used to be due to his cancellation, he is still a big part of Rylan's channel and appears in pretty much every vlog that is posted. Rylan's vlogs do show family time with Morgan and their parents, as well as vlogs like recent moving back to LA with Shane, where Rylan and Shane head back to LA for a visit and spend some time with Shane's mom and brother. It's safe to say that if there was regular time being spent with Shane's dad, that we would see more of that in vlogs or posts, but this could also be due to Shane's dad possibly not wanting to be on camera or them wanting to keep it private, which is understandable. And speaking of dad talk, Shane recently 
shared a picture to his Instagram story of a blinged out tumbler with dad etched on the side and the text manifesting. So can we presume that Shane and Ryland are thinking of becoming dads themselves soon? There has been talk about it in the past and even some clickbait titles on Shane's channel and it's no secret they want to be parents. Is 2022 the year? We shall see. The last two YouTubers we talked about are on the possible parents list this year, but honestly, let's hope this next one is not. Tiana Mojo has made it no secret that her relationship with her parents was super rocky and she didn't have the upbringing that most may call normal. Clearly by the way that I am, I'm sure that most people, whether they hate me or love me, can come to the overall consensus that I was not raised normally. <laughs> Tiana was born and bred in Las Vegas and her dad is Rick Mojo and since launching her YouTube career, she has actually done quite a few videos with her parents or her quote crazy dad being the main subject. During her video titled Finally Opening Up, about my growing up slash my insane dad, which she posted about four years ago, Tana reads off a list that she compiled of all the supposed weird shit her dad did while raising her. Most of it is pretty trivial and silly, and she says herself that it is a lighthearted video to be laughed at as opposed to something dark. Tana spoke on the Unfiltered podcast back in 2021 and said that in some ways she treated YouTube and Hollywood as an escape from her family life. Like my parents never like instilled anything that parents instill in you like structure, responsibility or schedule. I dropped out of high school at 15 because I couldn't even like go to school on time. Like so many of the mistakes I feel like I made in the beginning of my career were from lack of so many things like I needed, you know? Yeah. She touches on having rebelled from her family and really not having any memory of ever being close with them. It's just dark and I, I get in trouble talking about it. It's very weird. My, my family was just very like abusive and just not dope. <laughs> <laughs> she says that she was neglected as a child and never got proper schooling or healthcare or structure. She expresses that a lot of her stress and worry can be explained by the lack of support in her childhood. Rick Mojo is not a public person at all, but what I did find on some of his background is that his last name was Grills until he changed it to the infamously silly Mojo after he was adopted by his stepfather. Do you know what that means? Tana Mongoose was almost Tana Grills. <laughs> That's it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. And of course, hit up the Hot Tea Twitter account where you can share any topics that you want to see covered. And for now, here's some eye bleach to enjoy to tide you over until the next Hot Tea Drop.